Hello world, Liu here, and today we will discuss about 9 things I wish I knew earlier about pandas. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. I'm a software engineer from Singapore and I make tutorials and practice questions relating to Python and programming. Now back to the video. So here let's start a JupyterLab instance. So here let's import pandas as pd first. Number one, dot apply. So here let's just create a data frame first. And next, we are going to square off the prices. And we can do this using apply. So df price is equals to df price dot apply and open and close bracket. And inside this open and close bracket, we pass in our function square. So here we haven't defined square, so let's do that. So define square. And here our function will need to take in a value. So I'm just going to call it value. And I'm going to return another value. So return value to the power of 2. So here if I print df again, I'm going to see that all my prices are squared. So 16, 25, 36, 49, and 64. So here instead of squaring, let's say if I multiply by 100, I'm just going to get that. So here, if we do not want to waste two lines writing a function, we can actually use a lambda function. So lambda n colon and n square. So let's get rid of this, and this will still work. So if I want to multiply by 100 instead, I'll just do this. Number two, creating a new column in our data frame. So let's say we have the same data frame over here, and let's say we want to create a new column. So here we have price square. So we can do this, df price, and we square it. So let's check df again, and we are going to have price square with all the squared values down here. So here, if I print df price, notice that we are going to get a series. And if we square this series, because this is a vector, we are going to get this. However, if we want to do more complicated stuff with this, we might need to use list comprehension. So let's say that we want to have a nickname. So nickname is equals to price, fruit, price. So here, let's get rid of everything. And let's try to generate a list of nicknames. So we have a list comprehension. And we have fruit and price for fruit price in df values. And let's add a bracket here. And here we are going to have apple 4, orange 5, pear 6, and so on. So here we can actually convert this into a string. So f string, we have three things. So here we have price, and next we have fruit, and then afterwards we have price again. So here we're going to have 4 apple 4, 5 orange 5, 6 pear 6, and so on. So now that we have our list comprehension, we can assign it to a new column. So df nickname is equals to this thing. And if we print df, we are going to get the correct nickname. Number three, the dot rename method for renaming columns. So once again, let's use the same data frame. And here we have fruit and price. However, let's say we want to rename fruit to something else. So df it goes to df dot rename columns is equals to, and here we have our mapping. So fruit, plant, flash, and let's print df. And here we are going to have plant, flash, and price. And next, if we also want to rename price, so let's say we rename it to monetary value. And here we are going to get monetary value. So one thing about this is this does not have to be in order. So this can be useful if you have many, many columns and you only want to rename a few of them. Number four, how we filter stuff in data frames. So here, let's create a data frame. And next, let's say we only want to display the fruits which price are less than seven. So firstly, let's do this. So df price is less than 7. So if I run this, I'm going to get a series of boolean values. So true, 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 false, false. And this is correct because 4, 5, and 6 are less than 7. So next, let's pass this entire thing into df. So df square bracket. And if I do this, I'm only going to get apple, orange, and pear. So here, if I change this to more than equals to 7, I'm going to get pineapple and durian. Number five, the tilde, which is this toileting over here, and filtering none values. So here, let's create a data frame and let's make some of the prices none. And here, we are going to get none and none here. And next, I'm going to use df.isna. 
and here we are gonna get true and true for price so let's add a price is now and here we are going to get a series of boolean values and if we pass it into data frame we are only gonna get the none values so let's remove this once again so here once again we have a series of boolean values and this corresponds to whether the price is a none value and next i'm going to put a tilde in front of our expression and if i run this notice that everything will flip so here the tilde means an invert so if i remove the tilde everything will flip once again and if i put two tildes we flip it twice so it goes back to normal so here if i filter using the tilde expression i'm going to get all the values which are not none Number six, group by. So here, let's create a data frame and let's add a shop. So this is from shop A, this is from shop A, this is from shop A, this is from shop B, and this is from shop B. And this is going to be shop. So if we run data frame, we are going to get this. So we can actually group by shop. So df dot group by, and we pass in shop. And if we do this, we are just going to get a data frame group by object. So usually when we do this, we have to have other functions afterwards. So if we have sum, so here for shop A, the sum of the price is going to be 15 because 4 plus 5 plus 6. However, for shop B, the sum of the price is also going to be 15 because we have 7 plus 8. So let's say instead of sum, we put mean and we try to find the average, we're going to get error because we cannot apply mean to the fruit names. So for now, let's ignore the first column. So df.log and we only select shop and price. And so if we run this, we are going to get the average price of each shop. So for A, we have 4, 5 and 6 and the average is going to be 5.0. And for B, the average is going to be 7.5. Number 7, value counts. So here, let's create another data frame and let's print df. And here we have apple 4, orange 5, pear 6, pineapple 4, durian 5, and apple 4 again. So here, using value counts, we can actually find the frequency of the different values inside our column. So let's say df price dot value counts. And here we can see that 4 appears 3 times, 5 appears 2 times, and 6 appears 1 time. So here, if we change this to a 4, 4 will appear 4 times, 5 will appear 1 time, and 6 will also appear 1 time. So here, if we change this to fruit instead, we have 2 apples, 1 orange, 1 pear, 1 pineapple, and 1 durian. And thus, it is also reflected here. So here, value counts can be quite useful if you want to quickly check the frequency of your values in a certain column. And number 8, we have FUNA. So here, let's say we have this data frame, and there are 2 none values. And next, we need to do something about the none values. So we can either drop the rows or we can fill them up with some other number. So let's try the second option. So we are going to fill these none values with some other number. So df.fillna, let's say 100. So if we do this, every single none value will be filled with the default value 100. However, if we choose to use a random number such as 100, our data frame might become skewed. So let's use an average instead. So next, we have df price dot mean, and we are going to get 5.3333 because 4 plus 5 plus 7 divided by 3 is this number. So when we get a mean, we ignore all the none values. So mean is equals to this thing, and df price dot fiona mean. And if we run this, we'll get 4, 5, 5.3333, 7, and 5.3333 again. However, if we print the F, we are still going to get none. And this is because this does not actually fill anything in our original data frame. Instead, this will create a new series. So if we want this to affect our data frame directly, we have to do something like this. So DF price is equals to DF price FUNA mean. So if we do this, we will get the correct answers. Alternatively, we can use this in place is equals to true. So if we do this, we'll get the same result. So here this in place is true means that whatever change we make will be made on our original data frame over here. Number nine, we can iterate through group by. So let's say we have this data frame over here. 
and let's say we have group by shop so if we do this we will have a data frame group by object however instead of using dot sum or dot mean or some other method we can actually iterate through this too so for key group in group by we print key and group and let's also print a separator here and here our key is going to be a and our group is going to be this data frame over here and in our second iteration our key is going to be b and our group is going to be this iteration over here so here if we choose to iterate through a group by object we can actually get all the groups in our data frame and this is useful if we want to do more complicated stuff with the different groups in our group by so once again thanks for watching and hopefully this was clear and easy to understand see you in the next one